All right, so here is a very wordy example. Um, so the, the scenario here is you've got a, you've got a kid. Um, it's a boy in the book. Could be a girl, I don't know why, but um, we'll stick with the, uh, with the book. It's a boy. Uh, the ball on a string, spinning it above his head, right? Doing like this. Um, we're not going to worry about the, the height dimension. We're just going to worry about the, you know, we're going to do it as a two-dimensional problem, um, which, uh, I mean, when we get to, uh, when we get to sort of uh, here, right, that's, that's going to help because we don't want to really have to worry about, well, the fact that there's also, you know, a downward acceleration due to gravity um, complicates things. Um, so the, so we think about the, the, the scenario here. Um, we have a, you know, just sort of viewing from above. We have a ball, and it's, so it's going around in a circle counterclockwise, right? The radius of the circle is two, two feet. We're doing things in feet and seconds here. Um, and the ball completes two revolutions per second. So the first thing we want to do is find a position function, r of t. All right. Um, so we know that for counterclockwise rotation in a circle, we're looking at sort of a cos t, sine t sort of thing. Um, we want two for the radius, so it's going to be two cos uh, and then two sine. Now I haven't put the arguments in yet because we also want to account for the for the period here. Right? Um, we want two revolutions per second. So in, in one second, we go around twice. So we go around 4 pi in one second. So each uh, increment of t should add 4 pi to the angle. Uh, that means that we're looking at a 4 pi times t for the position function. Okay? All right. That's not so bad. That kind of tackles question one. Uh, part two, find the acceleration. Okay? So... First, we calculate our prime, which is the velocity. Okay, so we're going to get from here um, minus 8 pi sine 4 pi t, and then 8 pi cosine 4 pi t. Okay, and you know, if you want, you can pull, well, we'll pull the constant out at the end. Um, so the acceleration, right, is V prime of T, or, or double prime, however you want to write that down. Um, so we take the derivative again. So we are going to get, um, so 4 pi is going to come out, we're going to get minus 32 pi squared cos 4 pi T. And then we're going to get uh, 32, oh, another minus sign, right? Because derivative of cos is minus sign. Uh, negative 32 pi squared sine 4 pi t. Um, now, one thing you might notice is if I pull out, not the whole, th I could take the 32, but I'm going to take out 16. Um, this is negative 16 pi squared. Now, if I take that out, what am I left with? 2 cos 4 pi t, 2 sine 4 pi t, um, which is r of t, okay? Um, there we are. Um, so that's the acceleration. Now, I didn't write it down here because the question was already wordy enough, but um, the question also asks us, well, like, look, why don't we comment on this acceleration? What, what do we have going on here, right? So if you think about it, right, at, at any given point, um, you know, if we're, say, here on the circle, the acceleration is pointing this way. Now, I'm not drawing the magnitude to scale because, um, right, 16 pi, that's a, that's a big number, right? So the, the acceleration is actually like, it's huge, right? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's 16 pi squared times the, the magnitude of r. So it's, it's really actually quite a big vector uh, in magnitude. Um, but the, uh, the one thing that we want to point out is that it's pointing opposite r of t, right? Because r of t 
goes goes that way. That's R of T, right? R of T goes out from the center toward the circle. Um, and the acceleration oops, points back, right? Um, so the acceleration here is, is what we call centripetal acceleration, right? Center-seeking acceleration, which is common for the circular motion. Um, and and the, the point here is that to, to make an object go in a circle, there, there has to be some sort of force being applied, right? Now, the, the force in question is the tension from the string, right? The string is pulling back on the ball as the ball is spinning around, right? Um, without that force being applied, like if the string snaps, that ball is just going to head off in a straight line, right? To have curved motion, you need a force. You need an acceleration, right? Um, so if you think about this as kind of a... a one of Newton's laws, right? One of these sort of fundamental um, aspects of physics that um, you can't have acceleration without force, right? So there's this force that's pulling it in and kind of keeping it from going in a circle. Um, so what's interesting is that the, you know, the velocity, if you, if you were to compute the speed, right? The magnitude of the velocity is constant. Um, so the acceleration is not speeding up the ball. It is just changing the path, right? Um, and, and this is the same sort of principle that it applies for, let's say, orbital motion, right? Something which is um, going around the Earth, right? Uh, something that's in orbit is technically falling, right? Gravity is pulling it in, but it has enough tangential velocity that it goes around, right? It moves around. So it goes in that circle. The Earth is pulling it in. If the gravity disappeared, it would shoot off into space, right? Um, so that's, that's what we have going on here. Um, now. The next part is we imagine that there's this tree here and we're going to do this strictly in a, in a 2D manner, um, right, because we, again, we don't want to kind of puzzle too much about the gravity situation. But what we have then is, um, and let's just kind of mark a point here, uh, oops, let's do it in red. Um, we want to end up at this this tree, right? And so this this distance here is ten. Uh, well, sorry, not that distance. Um, that distance, right? The tree is is ten feet in front of the boy. The boy is at the center of the circle. This is not to scale. Um, so the idea is we want to we want to release the ball from a point on the circle where the tangent vector is pointing towards the tree, all right? Because once we remove the force, once we let go of the string, then the ball is going to move in whatever direction it was going. That instantaneous velocity, right, becomes sort of the constant velocity. We remove the acceleration, and then the velocity stops changing, and we just head off in that direction, okay? All right. So um, if, we, if we look at what we have here, so we have sort of R of t is this, and then we have this vector, we'll just call it v. All right? And one of the things we'll notice is that uh, v plus R of t, we sort of think about adding right, tip to tail, R of t plus v, or v plus R of t, is equal to this vector here, which is just 0, 10, right? And so R of t should be equal to um, 0, 10 minus V of t. OK. Um, so we're, we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for the t value. I guess we could put the, you know, this v is really, um, it's really v of t, right? It's the velocity at some time t. So we're, we want to figure out what is the time t when v of t plus r of t is equal to um, this vector, 0, 10. Now, we have r of t, we have v of t. Um, we can add them together and see if we can work it out. 
One, uh, one observation that uh, we could make, and this is pointed out in the textbook, is that we have a right angle to work with here, right? Um, so this is a theorem that was proved in the previous section. I didn't record a video on it. It's kind of a, um, a nice fact, though, that um, if, you're, um, if you're moving in a circle, if the magnitude of your position vector doesn't change, right? So if you're sort of dealing with circular motion, the position vector will always be orthogonal to the velocity vector. And that basically follows from just taking the um, product rule derivative of the dot product, right? Magnitude squared is, is r dotted with r. Um, you take the, the derivative using the product rule, you will get 2r dotted with r prime. Has to be 0 because magnitude is a constant, right? Um, OK, so what we can do is we can dot both sides of this equation with r of t, right? So then um, r of t dotted with r of t will be equal to 0, 10 dotted with, oops, let's just write r of t for now. r of t minus, well, 0. OK. Great. Now, r of t dot r of t, that's just magnitude squared. That's an easy enough calculation. So what we get here, and let's just kind of throw it up here, uh, right? r of t dotted with itself, because we're on, a, we're on a circle of radius 2, that left-hand side just becomes a 4. And on the right-hand side, well, 0 dot, you know, so that's going to be 0. And then we're just going to have 10 times the y component, right? So 10 times 2, 20 sine 4 pi t, right? So sine of 4 pi t is 4 over 20, 1 over 5, right? And so now we can, we can solve for t, right? So 4 pi t is going to be arc sine of 1 over 5. Um, plus some multiple of 2 pi, right? Um, I don't know how many times we're going to be going around and around and around. Um, OK. So this is our angle, right? So 4 pi t is the angle here. So we're looking for that particular angle when we should be releasing. Um, we can always add a multiple of 2 pi, right? And so solving for t then, t is going to be 1 over 4 pi arc sine of let's write it as 0 0.2 um, plus, um, and we're going to divide by 4 pi, so half an integer, OK? Um, so at any time of that form, we should be able to release the ball. Now, not how's the kid? The kid's spinning. How's the kid going to calculate that? I don't know, right? Um, the kid's not. But maybe with a bit of practice, you can kind of get, you know, yeah, with a bit of practice, you might be able to figure out when you should let go of the ball. You might have to try it a whole bunch of times, but maybe you'll figure it out. Um, you're probably not going to figure it out by doing the calculation. You're probably going to try it out by actually spinning the ball, releasing the ball, and seeing which way it goes. Right? But we have the answer nonetheless.